Wowed by a record 31 car entry, a huge crowd packed into the tight Brands Hatch Indy circuit for the opening three rounds of the eagerly anticipated 2014 Dunlop MSA British Touring Car Championship. Adding to the excitement, this year's full capacity grid not only included cars representing 11 of the world's largest car manufacturers, but also no fewer than seven proven BTCC champions. 2013 champion Andrew Jordan headed the star-studded cast, which also featured past champs Gordon Shedden, Matt Neal, Jason Plato, and Colin Turkington, as well as welcome BTCC returns for two touring car legends, Fabrizio Giovanardi and Alain Menu. In brilliant spring sunshine, the 2014 action kicked off with a fiercely fought qualifying session that lived up to all pre-season expectations. Incredibly, the top 23 cars were covered by little more than an eighth of a second, with champions filling the top five places. Jordan kicked off his title defence in fine style by claiming pole position in his Pertec Racing Honda Civic, just ahead of Plato's MG6, Turkington's BMW, and the two new Honda Civic Tourers of Neil and Shedden. Menu lined up a competitive eighth in his BMR VW, while Giovanardi was struggling to come to grips with his Airwaves-backed Ford Focus and found himself languishing in a lowly 18th spot. As the lights went out, front row man Jordan and Plato fended off Turkington's fast-starting BMW. Back in the huge pack, Menu's comeback lasted little more than the first corner, with the double champion spinning his Volkswagen out of the predictably hectic first lap action. Neil wasted little time muscling third place from the frustrated Turkington, and Shedden repeated the trick at mid-distance. The BMW speed dropped off thereafter, and the 2009 champ slipped behind the Audi of hard-charging Rob Austin and teammate Rob Collard in the closing laps. Up front, the peerless Jordan maintained his slim advantage over the fast-following Plato to take maximum points with his first ever BTCC win at Brands. Plato was happy to kick off what's a long 30-round campaign with a solid second place, while Neil, Shedden and Austin completed the top five. Jordan again made the perfect getaway in race two, but there was drama behind as first Jason Plato's MG was slow away, and then Neil and Collard collided at the opening corner. While the two of them recovered control, Shedden took advantage, slipping around the outside into second. As the top two made their escape, Turkington was the man on the move, passing Collard for fifth, Foster for fourth, and then Neil for third. The BMW then closed down the two leading Hondas, but a late safety car following an accident between the MG of Mark Hines and the Honda of Martin Depper slowed his progress, and the Ulsterman had to settle for third behind a delighted Jordan and Shedden at the chequered flag. Further back, the delayed Plato recovered from 27th on the opening lap to grab 11th place, and what could be five vital championship points come October. With the top six reversed for the day's final race, this time it was the two BMWs of Collard and Foster that lined up at the front. It was Turkington, though, from fourth spot who was the man to watch, grabbing third at the start. He then squeezed past teammate Foster for second before pulling a similar move on Collard's sister BMW for the lead. Following a brief safety car period after Menu and impressive rookie Tom Ingram came together, all eyes switched to Plato, who was continuing to make up for his race two dramas. The MG slipped past the new Mercedes of Adam Morgan to move into the top five, and then made swift work of Shedden's Honda for fourth. Neil and Plato then both outwitted Collard to secure spots on the podium, but with laps running out, they couldn't catch Turkington, who roared home to notch up his 25th BTCC career victory. After the champagne flowed, Louise Goodman caught up with Andrew Jordan. Andy, two nice shiny trophies on the table behind you. That's always a sign of a good weekend, isn't it? It's been a good, uh, good day at the office today, a good weekend at the office. If you'd um, said that I could get Paul two race wins and the lead of the championship out of uh, snapped your hand off so yeah really really happy last race wasn't great but qualifying race one and two were, were really really special and, and to do it the way we did you know qualifying 
last three minutes of the session to get pole, and that really then set us up for race one and two. Looking forward to the next round, Donington, your home event, isn't it? Yeah, I love Donington. It's a, you know, it's a classic old school circuit, really fast and flowing, and it's my home event. You know, I live half an hour away, so uh, really look forward to going there. Obviously, we're going to be carrying some weight, but what the hell, it's going to be a great weekend. Donington are working really hard to to make the circuit back to how it used to be and they're doing that so I'm really looking forward to going there it's been a great crowd here and I'm sure that will continue on to Donington what kind of, of cars which teams do you think are, are likely to be at the four at Donington what's what's the circuit like which cars will it suit I think the usual ones are going to be yeah you know obviously I think the success ballast is going to have more of an effect on your position in qualifying this year because there's so many more people up there. So we're carrying 45, which is the way it is. We'll see where we can get to with that. Uh, I think Jason would be very strong in the MG. Obviously, Colin and the BMs look very strong. The Honda's strong. There's so many people that are going to be up there. I think Menu in the, the VW is going to be strong as well. So you can't just focus on one person. You, you know, we just focus on what we do. Um, you know, get as much performance as we can and see what the others do at the end of the weekend. Classic track for you guys driving around it, but it's a great circuit for spectators as well, isn't it? You've got some fantastic views there. If I was going to go and watch there, I'd park myself with a deck chair down the crane of curves because it's such a cool, fast-flowing part of the circuit, unlike anything else really in the country, you know, with that undulation and back up the hill under Stark, well, what was Starker's Bridge. So it, it's a real old school to go and watch that and there'll be some classic racing there as usual. Hopefully a few more trophies to take home with you after that one as well. We'll see you there. Despite only finishing 13th in the day's final race, thanks to his two earlier wins, the defending champion leads the 2014 title race as the teams now head to Donington Park for three more frantic touring car showdowns on Easter Sunday.